Well, since I've uploaded several of the videos about my heat pump installation and my journey, quite a few of the questions have been surrounding British gas and how that process actually worked. So I'm going to try and run you through it and hopefully I won't ramble too much and I'll get to the point and I'll show you a breakdown in some of the costs and uh, some of the hiccups along the way, but give you a realistic overview of what the process was like for me and one of the main reasons I decided to go with British Gas after all. So this was a reply to my initial inquiry on their website. Um, just a quick response by email asking me to submit uh, photos, front of the property, the pro potential location of heat pump, the fuse box slash consumer unit and the electricity meter showing the fuse rating. So I submitted those photos on the same day and um, there wasn't an immediate reply so um, I don't know if I've did I screenshot the reply no this was um, this was just further down the email I think saying they were currently uh, installing already in Devon Cornwall and Somerset so that didn't apply to me I wasn't in the southwest so it said get your home prepared be well insulated uh, we already have triple glazing but um, loft insulation was on the agenda to top that up and increase it from 150 millimeters up to 350 millimeters and you might need to make some you know I knew all of this stuff anyway potentially might need planning permission potentially might need to update some of the pipe work anyway um, so what happened between that and between the surveyor coming for the first time well it was one week for a proper reply and I thought that's not a good start and then I replied to that which was uh, wanting some further photos and further details and uh, then five days later after my second round of emails with them um, I got a phone call and it, it was okay they just wanted to book in a surveyor but here we were over two weeks between initially registering my interest on the website and then actually getting an appointment with the surveyor the surveyor was booked in to come over but it was a month away so I kind of put them on the back burner and continued to pursue some of the other options as I previously mentioned in my last video anyway. So then the surveyor came and things kicked off. Uh, starting with a full heat loss calculation here you can see the design temperature for the different rooms um, watts per meter squared required the area of that that zone and then the actual power in watts and the energy needed kilowatt hours so uh, my total heat loss for the spaces that we were going to be heating is 5.8 kilowatt uh, sorry not hours kilowatts um, now we do have some spaces that previously were heated and they do have radiators in and they are still connected onto the heat pump circuit but their storage unheated areas really for most of the time but I could open the TRVs and open the lock shields and we could be using those could be using those unheated spaces as well so anyway um, first step heat loss calculation and then from that we could assess the emitters now um, what I need to um, what I need to go through in another video is these ones here Bedroom 1, bedroom 2, bedroom 3, bedroom 4, study. Um, those ones I'd already upgraded myself because the radiators were 40, 50 pounds each. Whereas if you want to get uh, in, if you want to get a company to do it, um, they're going to be charging you 150-ish, something like that for some of those small easy to manage radiators and it's such a simple job a couple of them I did with my young kids in their bedrooms and they got to get involved in their own way and I'd already calculated that um, I knew we were uh, over the required so you can see here bedroom two for example required heat loss was 350 and the radiator that I'd installed was 364 bedroom three requires 186 and I installed one with 227 so you can see I just slightly oversized those um, for the master bedroom it was required 481 and I'd installed capacity for 516 and this is at the 
flow temperature of 45 degrees and so I knew we were designing the system in the correct ballpark and I already knew that the downstairs uh, downstairs WC did not require uh, an upgrade um, you probably could have told that if you ever came in our house and went in there anyway because it was always like a furnace and so um, there were some further changes and a lot of bit a lot of debate about how we tackle some of these areas like the kitchen and the the conservatory the hallway um they decided that it required a much larger one and that was to account for um a small utility area that is off the hallway that we leave the door open all the time and the upstairs landing both of which don't have their own radiators in so to account for the heat loss we kind of open the hall up into you know accounting for three areas so i had upgraded the radiator in the hallway already but we needed to, to upgrade it further to account for those extra areas anyway you can see ultimately the demand is met with those planned radiators and eventually we changed what was happening in the kitchen and conservatory to kind of try and streamline things and instead of putting three radiators in there we just put two in a schedule of what needed to be done and um, here you can also see that they did uh, their electrical safety test they also did a water pressure test i didn't get a didn't get a document to confirm the water pressure test so um, here we go with some of the design calculations so this is uh talk showing you actually the domestic hot water first and shows the capacity and how much heat will be needed and how much it will cost to run so um, one of the things that you'll find along the way I don't think it actually shows on here okay we'll come back to it when it does on the next few pages these were the space heating calculations to show what will be needed oh, that does show so it shows the scope on the space heating, but it doesn't show it on this page for the domestic hot water. We'll come to that. I know it's on some other pages later on. Oh, here we go. Scope of heat pump in hot water mode, 1.75. That's just outrageous. I don't know if that is just... Um, are they taking into consideration there is that a calculation using the immersion for a certain percentage i can't understand why that is such a low figure because uh right now we're we're well over three for our cop of uh domestic hot water so um some of this is accurate some of this is not completely accurate but i understand uh things like this scop are based on MCS figures basically um, so let's go on to the next uh, page oh this is just a continuation of that last one it shows the cost differential it's here it's not actually showing the gas so I did have another page that compared it to the gas but uh, also you can see here fl the flow temperature at 45 and my outside air temperature minus 1.8 Three degrees because we're very far south and one of the warmest uh, cities in the UK so anyway it's showing here seven kilowatts which again is also not true and this was also a battle that we'll come to a bit later on um, uh, noise level calculation form one of the main reasons that we had to go for the valent was although i ended up getting planning permission anyway it was this uh the valent one passed the mcs noise level calculation and the daikin that they were originally proposing did not so and there was a few decibels in it but ultimately um they wanted it to be lower than 42 i believe and it this one comes out at 41 using the the valent figures so um they completed that and um here we see another mcs system performance estimate and again we've got the hot water at 1.75 they also predicted the efficiency of the existing system as 87 percent and i know in fact it being a non-condensing boiler that the figure will be 
closer to 60%. Um, maybe on a good day, we might have had 65% out of our previous boiler. So there's quite a few discrepancies in here. And it, you know, it's not absolutely perfect if you want to audit this and scrutinize it. I'm sure there'll be some other things that people will have noticed. Um, but ultimately, I knew I'd done a lot of my own calculations and um, the surveyor who shared a little bit of frustration he's he was doing a good job but he realized there were limitations within the british gas system and ultimately said you know we are kind of learning as we go and this is still kind of a new process to them and a new system so they were ironing out some of the kinks and so i i certainly forgave them for a few things so um here we can see some of the existing system consumption and um, the net energy required to, and this is based on the 87% again. So I ignored quite a lot of this to be honest and um, here you can see the flow temperature and the uh, amount of electricity consumption that would be required. So we were coming in somewhere around 3000 kilowatt hours per year was what they were estimating we were going to use. Um, here we go okay oh sorry hang on the kilowatt hour electricity consumed okay 45 degrees we're about 3000 and then over here 5000 okay space heating and then uh domestic hot water okay yes right um uh, wrong way where am i going here we are right uh flow temperature so this again is MCS figures that have been submitted and verified to MCS. So the reason they use 3.91 is a fixed flow temperature of 45 degrees. Of course, we're on weather compensation. And so we are regularly 35 degrees or below with a COP of 4.36, which massively improves it. And here we go with the floor plan of how things were going to look. This was the original um, layout. You can see the pink radiators were the ones that I'd already upgraded and that were sufficient to be kept. Um, there is another one here in our storage area, but uh, we omitted that one to, um, as we weren't really worried about that. And here was one I'd upgraded in the study and I was about to hang one on the wall in the conservatory. I had some spares from a previous project, but uh, ultimately we did end up with uh, the new Vertex vertical radiator on this wall and on this wall in this conservatory. I mean, now it's fully insulated and it's an extension. We use it as a dining room, even though it's, you know, it's got glazing on on three sides so we were able to go without this one in the kitchen which was brilliant because we have fridge and units along here so it would have been quite a sacrifice to put one in there as i mentioned before the one in the hallway needed a little bit of upgrading and um, we had to make a bit of a compromise on the living room so um, the buffer and the cylinder were planned to squeeze into our existing cupboard as you as you've seen in my other videos and they noted down stuff like the stopcock and consumer unit and the primary pipework runs and you can see the original intention to site the unit was in this orientation okay then they went on to send me loads and loads of literature and in their own literature you can see right here heat output in kilowatts 6.2 considering they came up with my heat loss of 5.8 um, I'm still curious as to why they pushed back so hard on using the 5 kilowatt uh, valent unit instead of the 7 kilowatt unit which clearly outputs a lot more and this shows external air, air temp 0 degrees and a flow temp of 55 degrees and um, I know that the 5 kilowatt unit at minus 3 degrees and a 45 degree flow temperature will output 6.1 kilowatts so the 5 kilowatt would have been more than man enough for the job the only area where the 7 kilowatt does um, does a better job than the 5 kilowatt is the domestic hot water 
the seven kilowatt is more efficient at those higher temperatures i believe it's got a larger condenser evaporator surface area and can uh, more efficiently go up to those uh, higher temperatures without sacrificing the cop as much but otherwise for space heating the five kilowatt would have done the job perfectly and would have been more than what we would need so um, bearing in mind that my own heat loss calculation where i think i was a little bit more stingy with the um air change figures my my one came closer to five and a half kilowatts so would have given even more a little an extra bit of headroom on top so i know some people talk about one in a 10 percent uh 10 percent headroom on there but they're heat loss calculation came up to 5.8 and the 5 kilowatt would have been 6.2 anyway i'm laboring the point way too much <laughs> this was uh, a lot of their literature i i wish i had paid attention and realized that the hot water volume of the 200 liter cylinder is only 170 liters it's probably my biggest regret of our installation i should have pushed for a 250 liter cylinder um but ultimately i had focused my attention in other areas and hadn't really honed in on the cylinder volume and what would be right for us and our home and especially going forward into the future i do predict a time as i start to uh, get some teenagers in my life that uh, 200 liters well the 200 liter tank but 170 liters of hot water volume it's just not going to be sufficient and we're going to end up doing two hot water cycles per day um, i i know that's ultimately the case um again buffer uh they were adamant there was absolutely no negotiation on that and on some things i was able to put back but a buffer was completely uh that is the way <laughs> my way or the highway and um of course they referred me to valent and they said you know valent say it has to have a buffer and I did find the literature online by Valent that does say that. So although there may be some small efficiency gains to be had, a buffer will help with reducing cycling and system volume. Not that I need it if you've seen the radiator sizes that we've installed in the property. Um, okay, what have we got? Oh, just more frequently asked questions, but all the usual stuff. Now, here you go. This is what you've all been waiting for sorry to keep you hanging for so long quotation breakdown um this shows some of the figures and this wasn't the final bill um because a few things changed along the way as you can see building work engineer to supply and collect bricks i already had um bricks left over from when the dwarf walls were built from the conservatory not that we lived here at that time but the previous owner had left a collection of uh, a big stack of the of new bricks around the side so i had those and i was able to pass them on clear the route for installation and install pipe work this was referring to changing our 10 mil micro bore to 15 mil and i'm glad that they conceded on that because i wasn't looking forward to plastering and painting all of the walls especially as the property was completely repainted by professional painters only about a year ago um, so it would have been a shame to undo all of that and uh, have a load more decorating work for myself so um, their their standard package was 9999 and that included the valent aerotherm aero um, plus seven kilowatt unistore cylinder the buffer the controls and everything else that came with that um, and the delivery and certification which has been all very prompt all the building control and electrical certification uh, certification came through very promptly so i was quite pleased about that in terms of radiators you've seen already um, the three medium ones to install were two in the bathrooms and what was the third one uh <laughs> let's go back 
where was it? One, two. Oh, okay, and it was originally in the kitchen. So yeah, we knocked one of those off. So we ended up in the end that we only installed one of the medium radiators and uh, I knocked two of those off because I took care of one of the bathrooms and we didn't need one in the kitchen in the end. The large radiator, installing large radiator was installing, um, there were still three of them ultimately. We installed two large radiators in the dining area, the big vertex ones that you saw and we installed the one large one in the living room which was nice and easy for them because it fitted on the existing brackets and everything so that was a quick 10 minute job to swap over those uh, trvs i didn't take them up on their offer for fitting trvs to all of the radiators including all the bedrooms and everything else i did though install my own drayton trvs as upper limits and um, they don't seem to be restricting the flow and they haven't cut in anyway. I've got them set much higher than the uh, design room temperatures. So, But um, I managed to purchase them way cheaper than £300 here and it's so simple, especially as the system uh, gets drained down. Once the system's drained down to quickly swap old uh, manual valves for new TRVs and new lock shields. So um, I quickly did that myself. Uh, sister water treatment, yes, but we didn't require a power flush as all the rads were new. Half of the pipe work was new and so it was quick to just do a quick uh, once through of mains water flush um, new cylinder absolutely everything so a power flush wasn't required and there was no external trunk in for the um air source heat pump so we um installed the pipe duct oh this was for the kitchen for the vertical radiators so you can see that that trunk in that they've used they've charged 57 pound 60 for supplying and fitting it which is an absolute bargain because i couldn't even buy that much trunk in for the price let alone all the labor required so this gives you a rough idea of where the price came out to although there were some slight changes uh, bear in mind that when they quoted me the government grant was £5,000. That subsequently was up to £7,500 because of several delays with planning permission and uh, valent stocks of the uh, heat pump, which I'll get, get into, into another video. Um, but British Gas, quickly after the government announcement, they sent me an email unprompted. I didn't have to chase them and they said, don't worry, we know that the government's upped it from five and a half, five grand to seven and a half grand, and that will be reflected in your final bill. So I didn't have to chase them on that. Um, what did what else did I want to cover here? So the um, yeah, um, there was the battle of uh, the position of the heat pump. I didn't really get into that, but I'll, I'll do a whole separate video about that especially how i got planning permission i did that all myself all of the technical drawings everything so i only had to pay the fee of 200 and whatever it was 230 240 pounds or whatever the planning permission fee is i didn't have to pay any you know architects or any of those sorts of people to help me and uh, the battle on the dining room radiators that i ultimately won uh, no buffer well, I didn't win that one. And again, I didn't win going for the five kilowatt unit over the seven kilowatt unit. Um, but ultimately, so far, the seven kilowatt seems to be doing just fine with modulating down. I seem to have very low cycle rate, perhaps something again for a future video. And um, uh, despite dozens of emails and phone calls and all of this information backwards and forwards, um, within one week of the surveyor coming and um, conducting all the heat loss and doing all of this, I had signed the contract to proceed with the installation because most of the most of the questions that I was putting to them and most of the things that I was challenging them on were accounted for, at least the important things in my mind. And so although it wasn't perfect, 
was very happy with the competitive price. I knew I was ultimately ending up with the Valent kit that was well regarded as high quality uh, stuff. And so I was happy to proceed. And that really leads me on to the next videos. The next couple of videos that I've been preparing are about my preparation work. So the radiators I changed, the loft insulation that I brought up from 150 to 350 mil, and then gaining planning permission. So stay tuned for those coming over the next week or so.